everybody welcome 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 to the dungeon my name is Robin and today is lamp working 101.86 today I wanted to share this beautiful magical technique that will transform any straight lined cane that you have into the infamous wigwag cane I hope you all enjoy this one it's so beautiful to watch the cane um, the transformation take place in the cane. I definitely, you know, I wanted to make something with the cane, so it is lengthy, but I hope you all enjoy this and stick with it to the end and um, get some good information here. Thank you all so much for joining me and watching. I hope you're all doing safe and well out there. And as always, I'll see you next time in the dungeon. I just wanted to give you guys a nice shot of the finished cane before we get into it. And this is a beautiful, the one on the right is opaque and the one on the left is the transparent. And that is the one that we're going to make is the transparent. So um, anytime you're going to make a cane like this, the black is super important. You don't want to use a black that's going to um, spider web out on you or um, compete with the other colors or bleed out or anything weird. So um, all I have is intense black. <laughs> and that's like the single worst black to use for something like this. But it's super dense and I decided I might as well go ahead and give it a try. There are probably 10 blacks out there that are 104 blacks and I just, I only have this one. If I had had Hades, by I think it's CIM, Hades, I would have tried that instead, but I'm stuck with the intense black. So in order to overcome any kind of reaction this color is gonna have with the colors, I am going to completely coat it with clear glass. That is super important. You wanna make sure this little bit of black is completely sealed up and you should be fine uh, to make this cane. So very quickly, I'm just gonna add my clear and I want to make sure that everything is completely coated with the clear, especially on the bottom, like areas where the glass might wanna pull out underneath the clear. So all I'm doing is just ensuring that the clear is all the way on the mandrel. And then I'll go ahead and heat up the other side. If you need to pull this end out a little bit to make sure um, that it's coated all the way, or if you need to add a little bit of clear there, go ahead and do that. Either way, I'm gonna add the other punty, give it a nice heat, and go ahead and pull this out into my stringer. And I kind of feel like this one in particular was a little thicker then I wanted it. If I had made it a little thinner, I think the colors would have shown up a little bit more, but it really ended up being nice. It, I, I really enjoyed the, uh, the final piece. So I'm gonna take that off and go ahead and start making the cane. And because I'm going to use transparents here, I wanna start out with a nice thick uh, base of white. And I like to use white from Ephetri number 204. I just like to use that white because I, I always use this. I've tried other ones, but this I keep coming back to this one. So this is the one I stick with. But use any colors that you like for this cane. I'm just gonna give it a really nice buildup um, of the under color here. So uh, the cane is thick enough when I pull it out. You don't wanna make a stringer here. You're definitely making a thick cane. And I'm just gonna roll this out in my marble mold a little bit and then roll it out on the back side to give myself um, a more of a elongated, straight-sided bit of glass. And that'll make it easier for me to swipe my colors on. And the colors that I have here, this is, uh, I believe these are all Ephetri, but this is going to be your grass green. I'm assuming it's a dark grass green. Now, if you want your colors a little bit more intense on your cane, 
swipe on two coats of transparents that might help with the density of the colors. That color right there was a gold ruby. And now I'm gonna put on a, what is this? This is a dark topaz, really beautiful color. And then next to that, I'm going to add an ink blue. Every time I will just flatten it a little bit with a knife to even everything out and uh, get ready for my next color. This is the uh, dark purple, which is different from this next color, which is a, uh, the dark violet. The violet is a little bit more on the red side and the purple, I believe, is a little bit more on the blue side. Anyway, I got my color on here and I am ready to just gently shape it up and get ready to put on the stripes. And I will say this again, if you have um, a different black, like maybe the um, Hades, you might want to try that instead or if you have a black that you um could um let everybody know that you like if it's good put it in the comments if there's a black that you that you like that's dense and doesn't react with other colors that's always good to know but because there's so many different blacks out there i haven't tested them all <laughs> i've only tested a couple of them I'm just gonna start by, I always start at the cane end and work my way to the top ends and kind of bring all of those lines together. And then here, because when I end or start a, a line of, of cane or stringer, the end will open up. It's not necessarily covered all the way and clear. And I don't want any of those ends to get in the way of the cane or become part of the cane. So I'm gonna tuck those underneath close to the mandrel. And then this top part, I'll do the same thing. The ends of the cane, I will pull off. So I'm pulling them together and slowly heating the top end and gently pulling that point out so all of the stripes and colors meet together at one central point. And then from there, we'll, I'll put the other mandrel on and we'll go ahead and pull this out into a nice thick cane. And that's really important. You don't want this cane to be too thin because of the treatment that it has to go through to make the wig wag cane. And there's several different ways to make this cane. I have seen people be able to make this cane right from this section here and begin to pull it out in the heat from here in the wig wag shape. But you know, that just didn't work very well for me. <laughs> so I had to figure out a different way of making this cane. And who knows, maybe this is the way it's done. It's uh, kind of hard to find information on this. So I'm glad I'm able to share it with you guys. So you can see the thickness of this cane. Any thinner than this, and and I, I did, you know, I made one, of course, and I didn't use it because it was just too thin. So you have to go through the whole process again. And at the end, I do like to mark each cane just real quick by giving it a twist forward and a twist backwards. Be careful with the heat here. I'm going to go ahead and take the uh, mandrel off. And now we have our cane to transform into the wigwag pattern. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna take my flame down to the smallest flame possible. You really want to have a tiny flame for this because you're spot heating and because you're working with something so small, you don't want to um, melt everything immediately. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna work right underneath that first uh, wave and I'm just gently going to heat in, a, in the round right below it and come out of the flame and give it a twist. And then I will go slightly, maybe a quarter of an inch lower than that. Heat it up very gently. You don't wanna overheat it and then gently pull towards me outside of the flame. So when you're pulling or you're twisting the glass, it is always 
above the flame. And then when you go to get some more heat, you're back in the flame. So whatever is happening, you wanna make sure that things are not overheating. It does take time to kind of figure this whole thing out. Um, the only thing I can say is practice, be patient, be good to yourself, and you will get there. But having that tiny flame really, really helps. And I'm also working kind of in the back end of the flame too. This is a great cane to experiment with for all sorts of different colors. You don't have to have the black stripes on there at all. You can have anything you want and um, it can look really fabulous. All right, I am getting kind of close to the end. Give yourself time um, doing the wig wag all the way down this one section of cane took me about 10 to 15 minutes. So it does take time. You don't want to uh, rush any of this because this is this is your end cane. <laughs> there is really no going back and fixing anything, so be careful. And when we are close to the end, all I'm going to do, I'm not going to go all the way to the end, but I'll just take off a little bit and maybe use that end cane for some marinis or something. Who knows? Either way, you're going to turn it back around and go ahead and heat the clear glass off and then you have your your cane to use your wig wag cane all right here i'm going to start the bead and if you're still watching thank you very much i'm glad that you have made it this far <laughs> so for the bead the base here i am going to use this color that's very similar to the effetri evil purple uh, this color is called Sedona, and it's a Fetri 257, and it's a very interesting color. However, it will get a little strange after you start heating it up. It might tend to look kind of, uh, give it a matte finish. It might look a little strange. So what I'm going to do on top of this, after I have established my base bead, I am going to just heat it up first and roll it out a little bit and pop any bubbles that might be traveling up from the uh, the mandrel or the bead release and roll it out real nice because what I want to do is add a transparent color on top of this to make a, a, a whole new color and what that color is is uh, Creation is Messy, a CIM color called Wisteria. And it is a gorgeous color. It is CIM number 628. And I'm just going to start by adding this color to one end, going all the way around, and then just kind of overlapping into um, a really tight spiral all the way down this bead, making sure that I overlap the color as I go. I don't want any of the Sedona to kind of creep up or anything because it is uh, it is kind of a strange color in the heat. <laughs> but having this beautiful transparent color over it will give it a deeper violet look and it will hold all of that strange color inside so it doesn't rise up to the surface. Either way, this color ended up, this color, um, both of these colors together ended up looking really, really beautiful. I was glad that I experimented on that. And at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and heat everything up nice and slow and begin to shape this bead up back into a really nice, even barrel shaped bead. I want my edges to look real nice and the center to be nice and smooth. So it is going to be ready uh, to put my stripes on with the cane that we just made. Looks good. I like the way this looks. So from here, we'll just 
you know, I will heat and I, I can spend a lot of time heating and marvering. <laughs> I try to cut some of it out though. <laughs> Um, so on here, once you're once you have your base speed, then I'm just going to go ahead and use my cane, starting from the very top and just doing a simple five uh, stripes all the way down on every side of this bead, leaving a little bit of the purple in between. Your base bead can be any color, and I wanted to use this color to complement the cane. And once I have that stripe on there, I will just heat it up and flatten it out a little bit with my knife. And that will smooth everything out. And then I will go ahead and just continue with that, adding my stripes. You know, when you do this, you want to make sure that after you have added your cane, and I'm adding this cane very slowly in the heat. Uh, I didn't have any problems with this cane wanting to pop or crack on me, so that made me really happy. And it's a gentle heat here. Don't push the cane too hard or it, it could break, so, so be gentle. Always be gentle. And we'll put one more on here. I already like the way this is looking. It just The cane is just an, an incredible little um, technique. So from here, what I want to do is go back to flattening everything out. And I'll use the edge of my marvering pad to help straighten anything up that I want to straighten up line-wise, like straighten up the line. And I'll give it a nice heat on both sides of the cane and then just flatten it down a little bit with my knife. So what I am trying to avoid here is overheating because I know that this cane has the intense black. And even though we coated it with the clear, it could still get thin enough to kind of mess with the other colors, if you know what I mean. So I will gently heat and st start to just press down the cane until the profile of the cane is really, really low to the base bead. And from there, I will just continue to, I'm rocking it now. I'm using my, my marvering pad to further flatten that cane a little bit at a time. Don't do it all in the heat. Things could get real crazy and you spent so much time already working on the cane that you don't wanna mess it up here. But if you do, that's okay. It's all a learning process. And I'm just heating things up on the edges, pressing my edges in and flattening the, the base of it. All I'm doing here is just looking for everything to be nice and smooth so I can begin to add all of my clear layers on top. And I do add quite a bit of clear, <laughs> probably more. It, I added more clear. Isn't that beautiful? You could stop right here and make a, have this gorgeous little bead. But of course, uh, knowing me, I gotta keep going. So we're gonna add all these layers of clear. And I add a lot, so I just completely, um, <laughs> the last layer of clear I completely cut out because the video is already long enough as it is. Um, so I'm just gonna heat this cane in and very gently, this is important, and this is why I wanted to show this, um, after I have my clear on here, the second layer, I'll show you how I deal with the with the edges. But for now, I just heated up that first layer of clear, and now I am gonna add my second layer of clear. And the cool thing about this is that the more clear you add, the more um, magnified the cane will be. And to me, at the very end, I felt like the bead had a very graphic, almost comic book kind of effect. Okay, so here's my edges. I wanna make sure that the clear goes all the way as close as it can get to the mandrel. So I'm using my special tweezers, which are my tungsten pick tweezers, and these are fabulous. But if you don't have these, then just use a tungsten pick and very gently pull um, your, your edges in towards the mandrel, and I do that on both sides. Even though I'm not gonna show it, we're gonna skip that bit so we can move on. <laughs> but do that on both sides and um, you shouldn't have any problems with the color underneath seeping up 
or wicking up to the surface. And here we are just about at the end. I am heating it up and of course it takes forever. And I will magically put my third layer on and here it is, <laughs> my third layer. Okay, we are done with this bead and this cane and I am so happy. I'm glad that I can share this technique with you guys. I hope you all enjoy this and get some good information out of it. Thanks for watching everybody. I'll see you next time in the dungeon.